Hey, you. Ever wondered whether to use AWS Secrets Manager or Parameter Store for your sensitive data? How do you securely use them in your CDK applications? A viewer once recently asked this question, and it's a great one. In this video, we're diving into the key differences between these two powerful AWS services. We'll break down when to use each one, and I'll show you step-by-step -step how to securely manage your secrets and configurations within the AWS CDK. If you're looking to up your cloud security game, this video is for you. Do you have a topic that you want to see me discuss in a video? Let me know down in the comments. Hi, if you're new around here, my name is Ryan. I'm an AWS Certified Solutions Architect and Developer, and my goal is to teach you modern serverless system design using AWS. Let's dive in. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Secrets Manager and Parameter Store, what they are, and when you would want to use each one of them. When you think Secrets Manager, you're going to want to think things that you want to keep secret. So this is going to be best for managing really sensitive data like API keys or database credentials. One of the key features of Secrets Manager is its automatic rotation feature. This is great for database passwords where you want to continuously rotate them to ensure that they stay secure. It allows easy cross-account access of your secrets. However, these features do come at a higher cost. So Secrets Manager Manager is ideal for managing sensitive credentials that might have rotation needs. On the other hand, inside of AWS Systems Manager, we have a feature called Parameter Store. Parameter Store is great for storing configuration data or just variables that you might need to pass between different AWS services. This could be Lambda functions, cloud formation templates, or CDK stacks. One of the best features of Parameter Store is that if you're using standard parameters, it's actually free. If you choose to use the advanced parameters, you can. There is a little bit of a cost associated with it, but it is cheaper than Secrets Manager. Parameter Store's storage options are actually pretty flexible, and it allows you to opt for either plain text parameters or encrypted parameters. One of the downsides, however, is that it does not offer automatic rotation of your parameters. So the use case here is best for application configurations and less sensitive data that you might want to pass between different AWS services. So next we'll hop over here into the CDK and I'm going to show you how to create both secrets and parameters in the CDK code and then subsequently reference those values within a Lambda function. So next we're going to jump over into the CDK and I'm going to show you how to create both secrets and parameters in the CDK code and then reference those values in a Lambda function. So let's jump in. All right, so I'm gonna have all this code in a GitHub repository listed down in the description. We'll jump in here, we'll jump into the lib, and we'll just take a look at the stack that we've created here. All right, so the first thing that we did here is we created a new secret. We're gonna go ahead and assume that this is going to be for database credentials, so we created a multi-value secret. This multi-value secret is going to have multiple values assigned to a single key, and our key is gonna be our secret name here, which is just my multi-value secret. Next, we're going to generate a secret string. This object is gonna take in the secret string template, and it's just gonna be a JSON string that contains our username, our database name, the connection string for the database. And then finally, it's also going to have a password, but we're opting to have it randomly generate this password for us. So we could set this up to be automatically rotated at a later time. Next, we're gonna create our systems manager parameter store here. This is just going to be a string value of my parameter value with the parameter name of my parameter name, just really simple. And our tier, we're just gonna pick standard. This is gonna ensure that it doesn't cost us anything to store this parameter value. Next, Next, we're going to create a Lambda function. This is just going to be a Node.js function, which is going to use Docker to build a Node Lambda function for us. We're going to put it as our entry of this Lambda index.ts. We'll take a look at that in a second. We'll set it to uh, the latest Node.js runtime. And then here, we're also going to pass in an environment object that's going to have our secret ARN and our parameter name of what we listed up here. And finally, we have to give our Lambda function permission to read both the secret and the parameter. So we're just going to grant read on both of those things and pass in the Lambda Lambda function. If we jump here into the Lambda function now, uh, we just created a base Lambda handler. We're going to parse out the secret ARN that we passed in in the environment object, and we're going to attempt to get that secret value, passing in the secret ID as the secret ARN. Then we'll parse that secret value and we'll just log it. We'll then do the same thing for parameter store, where we will parse out the parameter name that we pass in in the environment object, and then we will attempt to get that parameter with the parameter name. In both these cases, we add the bang here at the end because we're just telling TypeScript that we know that this value will not be null or undefined because we know that we are passing it in in our environment variable. And then finally, we'll just return a 200 status code with our secret and our parameter in it. So let's go take a look at that in the console and then test out our Lambda function. All right, so we went ahead and deployed that. We've got our secret stack here. We can jump in here and we can see our resources that were created with the multi-value secret, the parameter store, and our Lambda function. We can jump here into Secrets Manager and we can see my multi-value secret. We'll click on that. If we go into here, we can actually go to retrieve secret value and we can see all of the different key value 
pairs that were passed in as that JSON object, including our password, which was just a randomly generated value. Finally, the last thing I'll note is we can click over here into rotation and we can actually set up automatic rotation for this secret. Next, we'll jump over here into systems manager and we'll go down here on the left-hand side to parameter store. And here we can see our parameter that was created and we can see the value here. So you can notice a little bit of a difference here. When you click into parameter store, you can just see the value displayed on the screen. However, in secrets manager, it does actually require you to retrieve the secret value first. Finally, we'll jump over here into our Lambda function and we'll click on our function that was created. We'll go over here into test and we'll just run a sample test. All right, so that executed, we can see the 200 status code and we can see that the secret and the parameter were retrieved successfully. And we can see the values of the secret here and then our parameter value here. So that about wraps up the video for today. Now you can securely manage your secrets through your CDK code and then reference them in a Lambda function. Which do you find yourself using more? Do you use Parameter Store or do you prefer Secrets Manager? Let me know down in the comments. Then also let me know if there's any other videos that you want to see me make on this channel. Thank you for watching.